Another sign of a closing society is when government starts to surveil ordinary citizens. Mussolini pioneered this. Hitler set up neighborhood spies. East Germany developed the Stasi. And China today has the Dangan system. You need a surveillance apparatus to close an open society. Most of us know that our emails can be read and our phone calls can be listened into. But most people, I would have to say quite naively think, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, why does it matter? All you have to do is read history to know that in a closing society, you don't have to have done anything wrong. If there's a surveillance apparatus, they can listen in. And they, as other institutions erode, they can simply say you've done something wrong or use leverage through the surveillance to intimidate you. The Stasi, the secret police of East Germany, kept everyone in a state of fear and silence for years, everyone thought they had a Stasi file on them. After the wall came down, it turned out that only 10% of people actually had a file on them. But all it takes is to know you're under surveillance to keep you scared and frightened. So this is one of the steps that I have a, a very personal relationship to and I have a lot of feelings about it um, for the following reason. For a year and a half, every time I would try to take a plane, I would get my boarding pass, and it would have a quadruple S high security threat mark on it. And they would take me out of the line and do that whole extra security check thing. And I kept asking, what's up with this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And finally, this nice young TSA agent said, oh, you're on the list. And I'm like, the list? I'm on the list? How was Nazi Germany able to round up so many Jews so quickly? Because they had mechanized the list. Again, how did Pinochet manage to round up mass arrests? Mass arrests are always a hallmark of a closing society. Thousands, tens of thousands of people in a notorious soccer stadium. The list. Every closing society keeps a list. So I researched it, <clears throat> and it turns out that I was in very good company. As of July of 2008, there are over 1 million Americans on the watch list. 20,000 names get added each month. 1 million entries. Now, there can't possibly be a million terrorists in the United States. We know, for example, there are lots of famous people on that list, don't belong in there, Senator Edward Kennedy, Nelson Mandela, peace activists, nuns, lots of people on the list. After doing some research, I discovered that I was in very good company. Many innocent, outspoken U.S. citizens are on the watch list. We understand that a new member is on the watch list, Drew Griffin of CNN. How did I get on this list? Well, the TSA is adamant it's not even me, even though it is me getting stopped at the airports. And my question is, why would Drew Griffin's name come on the watch list post his investigation of TSA? What is the basis of this sudden recognition that Drew Griffin is a terrorist? What a curious and interesting and troubling phenomenon. David Antoon, highly decorated Vietnam War veteran, served his country bravely, criticized the Iraq War. I mean, you can take WMDs and the Gulf of Tonkin, and you can see the manipulation of, of information to bring the American public into accepting and approving of a, of a war that really had no basis. So I started writing about that. It wasn't long thereafter, I noticed that every time I would purchase a ticket and board a flight, I would uh, receive boarding passes with four S's on them. Every time I travel, every time my children travel, every time my wife travels, your own mother travels, they're all on the watch list. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's an inconvenience, but it's insulting. And so when 
you want to close down an open society, you keep everyone under surveillance so that people increasingly become too frightened to stand up and speak. To one of these meetings came a young FBI agent, bringing with him, concealed among groceries, a portable radio transmitter. The ties of blood that bind us to the German fatherland can never be broken. 